Hello everyone and welcome. Today we are looking at adding fusion sliders to the Avada theme within WordPress. The fusion slider is generally used for creating banner images on a website. I've used the fusion slider on our home page and I've set the slider to display full page. That makes the image stretch to the full width of the browser and to the base of the browser window. There's lots of options within the Fusion slider and I'm currently just using a single image and some, some kind of overlaid text, a heading and a subheading and a couple of buttons that are kind of default options when you add a new slide. I am only using the one Fusion slider image on my homepage. You can create multiple Fusion slider images and arrange them in your own sequence and the sequence can you do have the option of looping the sequence so um, it returns to the beginning fusion slider is very easy to use and is mobile and tablet friendly and also cross browser compatible meaning it works well on microsoft explorer firefox and safari browsers just touching on the mobile friendliness, I will resize a page uh, using the minimize browser icon in the top right of the screen. And that will give us an idea how the page will look like on a mobile device. As you can see, the text and the buttons resize nicely and are still legible and the buttons are still easy to use. Many users will be visiting your website on a mobile device, so it's, it's, you need to consider they are potentially on a 4G connection and it can take a while for large images to load. So weigh up the kind of loading time and how many images you want to use. So let's start editing the Fusion page sliders. I assume that you're logged into WordPress and you have the Avada theme installed. I'm logged in and you can see the Avada toolbar at the top of the page. I'm currently looking at my website. So to return to the desktop within WordPress, just click on the name of your business in the top left hand corner of the page and click on dashboard. So you'll notice the fusion slider option on the left navigation. If you just hover over that, you get two options to edit slides, add or edit slides, or add or edit sliders. Now the slides are your images and the slider is the viewer which holds your images. I always start by adding a slider first. Okay, so I have a number of sliders already made and I've named them the same as the page pages that I've used the slider on just to help reference and edit them in the future. For demonstration purposes, I will add a slider to the home page, and we do that by under where it says add slider, give the slider a descriptive name and I shall call it home test. Okay, and then you scroll down, leave the short code. You can create your own short code, but leave that for now. And you, below that, the slider size, you can change the height and width for the slider. Well, I'd quite like to make it fill the home page like I've my previous slide. So I'm going to make sure this full screen slider has been checked, and then the slide will display correctly and fill the browser window. As we work down the options, we have the option of checking the parallax scrolling effect. That's quite a um, cool effect. Uh, when that's checked, the image becomes almost like a background image. And when you scroll down the page, the, um, the rest of the page below scrolls over the top of the image. Um, worth having to play with that, turn that off and on, see if you like the effect. It's used quite a lot on modern websites and it, under the right circumstances it is quite effective. Don't use it all the time. If you use multiple images on your website, you get the option of turning on navigation arrows which appear if you hover over the image, allowing the user to scroll through um, 
the sequence quicker or return to an image. There's various options here. You can enlarge or you can change the look of the icons. I generally just leave that alone and continue, but feel free to have a play. You can also auto play the slide, so it automatically starts the sequence loop when the page loads, or you can turn that off. And the check box here sl under slide loop, that will loop the sequence so it returns to the start of the sequence. Just below that, you have the uh, type of animation between the slides. Would you like it that the images to, to fade into each other or for the whole image to slide off the page and then the new image appears? Yeah. And below that, you have the options to change the speed of the slider. Perhaps you want to slow it down or speed it up. So have a play with those images. But what we're going to do now is add the slider because we've like just to reiterate, we've checked on the full screen option here and that will basically ignore these slider sizes above. So I'm going to scroll down, click add slide and then the slider will appear here. Right, so now we've created a slider, we need to add some slides to it, the images that will actually display. So we click on the option above, add or edit slides and then you'll see the number of it, slides of currently in use on my website. We're going to add a new slide with a button at the top there. Add new slide. It's very easy to add a slide and I will just show you the basics to get you up and running as quickly as possible. Right, so let's create a slide. Now in the under the add new slide there's a field I'm going to give it a title it does this title doesn't appear on the website it's purely for your own reference so I'm going to call it test slide and then as we scroll down through the options here there's only we're only going to adjust the basics the it's asking what type of slide is it well it, in this case it's an image but you can upload you can link to video clips on YouTube which are quite effective uh, we'll look at that in a, we'll cover it in another video. And um, as I displayed earlier, on my homepage, there's a heading and subheading. This is where we add the text for the heading. In here, we'll just put, this is a test heading, just so you can see how it displays on the website. You can adjust the font size for the heading manually, or just leave it, 40, it says there's a the standard pixel size is uh, 60 pixels. It's quite a large um, font size. So I'm going to adjust it and change it to about 41 pixels. It's quite a common size I use. And below that, you can change the color of the heading um, if you know the um, hexi reference code. But uh, as we scroll down, the default is white text. And the default options are, it appears of a kind of transparent, well, opaque um, black background around the text to help make it more legible. This background can be turned on and off by uh, simply clicking yes or no. And as you scroll further down the caption area, you could consider this the subheading. Again, we put, this is a subheading and the font size the default is 24 we leave it as 24 i will have a look and see if it's large enough if not you can come back edit it and just increase the font size again you can change the color of the subheading or caption and the caption background is, uh, can be turned on and off also so again it will be white text on a opaque black background we're probably about 50% transparency to black background so you can still see the image through the background as you scroll down a bit further right so by default fusion slider gives you the option of adding a couple of buttons and it actually puts in the HTML code that generates the buttons uh, a bit like on my home page I had the two green buttons below the heading and subheading now if you don't want buttons you can simply scroll over the text here in both of these button boxes and just click delete on your keyboard and remove it. Should you wish to want, use one or both of the buttons, then you need to e edit 
the button text where it says button text between the brackets be careful not to delete any of the code apart from the text within the brackets and you will also need to put the link um, to the page where you want to link to within these um, kind of speech marks there okay and um, so for demonstration purposes I will um, do a couple of test buttons okay so I will change this uh, first button button number one and change the text button text to I shall just call it left button now the actual link I want the button to go to I will just open I've got another tab here with my website open and I will make a button, the left button go to my portfolio page so I will copy the entire URL I just press can I can either right click and click copy and I can go back to click on the previous tab and then I will paste that link between those uh, speech marks there okay and then now that's that button done and the one below I will show call that right button just again change that text right B U. there we go and I'll just click on the tab again and I'll just link that to the prices page uh, copy the text click back on the uh, previous tab and paste that in there again and then that's the buttons done there are various other options here but we'll look at those in a, another video now we've added our buttons and the text headings to our slider we scroll up to near the top of the page where we can now add the image so where it says featured image on the right hand side here we click on the set featured image link and we can add an image from our media library or we can find a new image and uh, from our computer so for demonstration purposes I'm going to select an image from the media library and I'm just touching on images and the size of the images well because we're using an image for a full screen slider we need quite a good quality kind of higher resolution image so when I click on this image of Wellington the image width is 1900 pixels and the height is about 900 pixels which is a quite a good size for a full screen uh, slider now the it actually tells me above the file size of the image which is 572k i'm not really going to going to go into too much about the file sizes on this video but that's almost that's just over half a megabyte which will take a few seconds to download especially on a 3g connection so let in this case i would only probably use one image and i would maybe try and compress that image and try to get it down to a smaller file size before i upload the image to the uh, media library so now i've selected the image i can um, add the we just complete a couple of fields here because this is quite important for search engine purposes is the alt image te alt text now this text is um, appears when you hover over an image on say Google Images and what we're going to do is describe the image so in this case I'm just going to put Wellington Park I'm going to copy that information and just paste it into the title field as well we, 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 uh, we won't use the caption or description at this point as soon as if you're happy with the image you're happy with the file size and it's not too large you don't want to be uploading two three megabyte pictures um, well if you're happy with all these elements just click the set featured image button and then that will load in the featured image box and the last thing we do before we publish it is to decide uh, we have to attach it or assign it to one of the sliders and we're going to attach it to the slider we made earlier the home test and now we can publish the slider your new slider won't automatically display on a page you need to decide what page that you want to add it to and go to that page I'm going to go to the home page by clicking pages and then home and I'm going to replace the current slider on this page 
with my new slider. So I'm going to scroll down to the bottom of the page and then we find some fusion page options and the top option is sliders and you will see slider type, fusion slider, select fusion slider. This is the existing slider that's on my home page. I'm just going to change that to the home test slider we've just made and then as usual the golden rule scroll to the top of the page click the update button and then we can view as soon as it's loaded we can view the page and have a look at our new slider and there it is if you wish to um, make any changes to this slide you can just click back to the dashboard return to fusion slider and edit your slides and then click on the slider that you've just made and then tweak any of the settings and just remember to update the slide that's it well done that's the end of the video uh, please subscribe below and check out some of our other video tutorials thank you